meeting to order. Uh, we've got some minutes to approve. The first is from the Select Men's Meeting of Monday, February 9th. We'll make a motion we approve in this printed. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have the minutes of the Seligman's workshop, which occurred on Monday, February 9th. I make a motion we approve them as printed. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have check voucher totals. Again, we individually approve each and every bill and initial it. These are the batch totals. Payroll for week ending 221 was $42,705.76. Accounts payable week 214 was $166,340.41. And we disbursed to the precincts $110,550 for a total spent of $319,596.17. I make a motion we sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, We have the Highway Department work logs, which are here in the folder for anybody to uh, look at. Brad, you guys have been busy. Yeah, very busy. <laughs> um, certainly continue to express our thanks. Uh, it's been a, they've worked a lot of hours, and uh, they've done a very good job. I don't know of anybody that couldn't go anywhere they wanted to go at any given time. So uh, We have a timber tax warrant. i got to love these. The amount of no dollars and no cents is to close out a, an open uh, intent to cut. I make a motion we sign it. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a contract to use the facilities. Rhonda Cameron wants to use this for a baby shower. She paid a deposit. Okay, schedule's been okayed by Peter Warren. I make a motion we approve it. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just, just to be able to announce the candidates tonight. Okay. <coughs> uh, we have a candidates night set up. Uh, meet the candidates night to be held here, town hall, um, in this gym, on March 2nd at 6.30. Uh, we don't have a lot of contested races. I do know there's a contested race on the planning board. Is that the only contested race we have? But it is a chance for people to meet the candidates and ask questions, and I certainly hope people will attend. We have a supplemental property tax warrant, the amount of $338. I make a motion we sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Under that one? Yeah. Okay. This is one that we do not have yet approved. Oh, it's build an error. All right, this is a, yeah. We have the request of abatement from the Donna Deborah Fales probably wasn't conveyed to the proper owner when the sale was recorded. And that's the result of the $338. I'll make a motion we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we have an appeal settlement request. This is on the Lightron Incorporated. 775 Route 16. Taxpayer filed an appeal with the New Hampshire Board of Ten uh, Tax and Land Appeals for the 2013 property tax. Basis for the abatement is the assessment exceeds market value. Taxpayers employed the services of a taxpayer's representative. The property has recently been leased with the tenant for maintaining a purchase option for $1.25 million.
The assessor has met with the taxpayer's representative and has presented a settlement offer of a revised settlement of $1.5 million for 2013 and 2014. The new assessment, once equalized for 2013, reflects a market value of 1.403, rounded in $1,399,000 for 2014. With that explanation, I make a motion to approve it. I'll second it. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a request for abatement. This is for the town of Ossipi. The town of Ossipi is taking this property by tax collector's deed. This property should be changed to exempt municipal. Uh, 147 Route 16B. Make a motion, we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have an appeal settlement request. This is from Mark Ruth Swenson, 7 Pocket Mountain Road. Taxpayer believes the assessment is excessive because the listing data was incorrect. The inspector has met with the property owner, changed the building condition for age to average, and changed the flooring to carpeting because of the lost living space on the second floor, made an adjustment of minus 5%. Takes the value from 370,400 to 346,000 even for a difference of $24,400. So make a motion we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> We have a debatement request. This is I allegio irrevocable trust. Taxpayer filed an appeal for tax year 2013 with an Hampshire Board of Tan Tax and Land Appeals. Taxpayer believes the assessment value is high because they have an appraisal with an indicated market value of 165000 the assessor recommends we approve this abatement. He's met with the taxpayer with the hope of developing a reasonable settlement. The taxpayer has offered a settlement proposal of 217000 assessed for 2013 and 2014. This revised assessment reflects an equalized market value of 202000 Revised assessment is roughly 23% higher than the taxpayer's appraisal. Then I'll make a motion we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Request for an elderly exemption, which our assessor is recommending that we deny because they exceed the income limits. With that, I make a motion that we deny. Second. All in favor? Tax exemption for veterans it meets the requirements and make a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> this is on an elderly exemption and the veterans exemption. They meet the requirements for the elderly exemption, but they're not for the veterans exemption. So we'll make a motion we approve the elderly exemption. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is a purchase order. Kelly Skeen. This is for the searches and for lean and deed process. The amount of $4,137.25. To make a motion, we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is a purchase order. Brad Harriman for the central tire. The, the main vendor for all our tires, and that's in the amount of $8,000. I make a motion to approve it. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That will be an open PO, Brad. You're yes. going to work off of yeah. This is 
a purchase order from Kelly Skiing for pitney bowls for the postage. The amount of $7,224. Make a motion we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Purchase order from Brian Harriman who lost B aggregates. This is an open purchase order for sand. The amount of thirty-five thousand dollars. I make a motion to approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we get a letter that we had asked Ellen prepared to Bubby uh, Lewis, Bub Avery, opportunity to congratulate you on a promotion to service to Towns Austin's full-time laborer. Make a motion we sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In the letter which we previously discussed, Elaine Sherman, our finance uh, manager, if you will, uh, she's also going to be promoted to serve as the Town of Hospice Finance and Benefits Administrator. Make a motion we sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. We have a notice from Department of Environmental Services uh, that we have uh, selected been selected to receive up to 25% cost match in 2015 for our exotic aquatic plant control efforts. Shows that we'll receive a herbicide herbicide grant award of $33,650 and on the driver assisted harvesting of $2,100. Do you want to rise to sign on this? Or that's you, what you're doing. That's what we're doing. Okay. You're appointed me last year, but you have to sign the authorization for me to sign the grant agreements every year. Okay. I make a motion that we, we approve that to allow Ellen to be the grant officer. Second. Any other discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a, a little bit of a weighty packet, but long in the story short, it's from the Department of Revenue Administration. They've done their yearly survey and they've determined a median ratio for the land, buildings, and manufactured housing in the town of Austria for tax year 2014 to be 107.2% of assessed value. Uh, that, of course, will be changing. Uh, we're embroiled right now in doing the town-wide reevaluation to get everybody back to 100%, but right now it's at 107.2%. We have a letter from uh, DOT, Brad, have you seen this on them shutting off street lights? No. Uh, evidently, this is something that's been going on for a while. It says in 2012, they wrote to you and wrote to us in regards to the Department of Transportation's proposal to discontinue state-maintained street lights not needed for motorist safety. The intent was to hold down state expenses. We've now completed the process of evaluating each light in your region and are compiling this information on maps to aid in the process. Um, I've looked at this, and long story short, they intend to shut off the street lights at 16 and 28, and 16 and 25, as well as some at 16 and 25 in uh, West Austin. Find the roads in there as well. Um, not all. I guess it's not opposed. So I'd like to have Brad take a look at this. Yeah. Um, in particular, the one that concerns me is the 16 and Pineapple Road, right. which is one of the intersections we're currently having studied because of the accidents, um, and yet they want to shut the streetlights off there. I don't know that that's necessarily a wise move, but I'm going to give this back to you, and if you want to take a look at it and uh, in your spare time in between snowflakes, okay. appreciate it. Um, we got a letter here from Harry Merrill. Uh, to the Board of Select Men. Last summer, you asked me to fill in an opening of the trustee of trust funds until March of this year, and he agreed. March is almost here, and the purpose of this memo is to let you know that I will be resigning from this position as of March 1st. Uh, most will know that Harry has also filed, filed to uh, uh, be town treasurer. So, long story short, we need to begin to think about we're trying to find and recruit uh, somebody to become a uh, trustee of trust funds. Um, if it, it's a report from the dog officer on a dog that he had picked up, 
We have a copy of a check which we received from the Northeast Recovery Associates for recycling in the amount of $1,163.49. This is uh, from a highway safety agency. Do you know why this is in here? It's on the... Uh, I think that was just the back of my All right. It's on... Uh, highway safety grants which will be available in the coming year. And there is also a copy of the Watershed News. It's here in the red folder if anybody look at it. All right. Red folder. <coughs> Excuse me. Brad, what do you cover bridge? Anything new? Nothing new up there at all. Um, we still haven't been there because of the cold and the snow and everything, so um, that's still on hold. You know, the February 19th meeting was canceled there. We just pay the third Thursday of March, which I believe will be the same date, I think. I think the days of people themselves in March, they did February, so, so March 19th will be the next uh, meeting with the engineers. Okay. I'll go for that. Okay. All right. Uh, anything new on the sidewalks? I do. I've had some correspondence with St. Louis School about that. Um, they, as it go, they, I've been waiting for them to respond to me on those questions we have with White Mountain Survey. Um, and I had to prod the uh, uh, answer out of them, kind of my assumptions of what our choices were, which were either um, you know, completely drop the project altogether, uh, go with another engineering firm, start the process all over again, or continue on White Mountain Survey. They not have not have to be you know, reimbursed, in other words, so they would have to go through the whole process with the, with the DOT, uh, all those financial, you know, the way the contract is written, stuff like that, which, you know, Jim and, you know, kind of often, you know, not, didn't want to do. Yep. Um, they said, that's basically right, we can do those three options. If we did drop it all together, it would be up to the federal highway, could have the option of requiring us to pay back the money they've spent to us, given us so far, which I believe is just over $20,000 yep. in the engineering costs. Um, if we did proceed with the project and just decided to pay White Mountain Survey out of our own pocket, not get reimbursed, we wouldn't have to do all that other work. We just continue on with them finishing the design for it. Uh, we have that option. I don't think they'd ask us to um, um, reimburse them for any, any of the funds spent to date on it. Yep. Um, and we could also request to go through with, you know, building the project to ourselves without, in that same avenue, without, you know, putting it for the reimbursement. Um, and that would alleviate them from requiring us to hire an engineering firm to oversee all the construction, which they want to do with Federal Highways involved in. They want us to hire uh, in the White Mountain Survey or go through the process, hire an outside consultant agency to oversee the project get built, which is foolish for a little, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars sidewalk. I, <coughs> I think I had a conversation with the DOT yep. about that and they do agree with it, but of course that's the way the Federal Highway regulations are all written. So to use their money you have to go go by their rules and stuff on that. So right. I guess my my thoughts are that one, I don't want to pay anything back. Right. Um, they changed the rules midstream. Is that is that true? That, that all of a sudden now they're requiring us to do things that we don't want to do. It is true because when we started this process, they did not have all these requirements in place at the time. These came in play probably a year, year or two after we started this whole process. Okay. So the, the rules did change with probably even the project. I, I don't have any intention of ever approving a reimbursement for them on them changing the rules midstream. Having said that, um, I'd like to see the sidewalks completed. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've been a long time and spent a lot of time and effort on, on getting those approved and everything else. So I guess what I'd like to see is for you to come back to us with some figures. Uh, what would it cost us to go, you know, to hire White Mountain Survey to complete the, their, their work? You know, what's it going to cost? Um, is it your position, is what I'm just hearing true, that if we proceeded with the construction of that we would not be eligible for federal highway money unless we do the things that they want us to right. do with the engineer. Right. How well, much I mean, of how much is their portion of what was going to be spent? 
100%. It's 100% reimbursement. So you're talking sixty or seventy thousand dollars that we will be ineligible for. Right. Now the money is. Ellen and I talked about this a while ago. The Warren article was not tied to a reimbursement of Safe Foods to School when it was approved back five six years ago now anyway. Um, so the money has been appropriated for the project that's sitting in the accounts to be spent. But were, the, but were the townspeople told that it was going to be reimbursed? I honestly can't remember. I'd have to actually go to the minutes of the, that town meeting to see. Okay. In the Warren article itself, the way it's written in the book and everything, it does not say that. Okay. I believe it was talked about that we were going to apply for the Safe Foods of School grant for it. Um, but I'd have to really look at the minutes and see how that was spelled out. Okay. Because that would be a big deal to me. Yeah. You know? They were told it was going to be reimbursed, and I think we ought to, we ought to get that reapproved before we went yeah. forward with it. Right. But, okay. Um, I think the other, you know, another option, too, would be to keep the cost down, would be the possibility of you know, the town crew doing a lot of the work themselves on the sidewalk. If we chose not to go with the reimbursement route, we could do that. And then our out-of-pocket expenses would be strictly for the granite curbing and the paving. Uh, the rest of it would be our own time and some, some gravel and stuff, which we have in our budgets anyway. It's not here to uh, for base material. Um, so we have that option there too. So okay. I can work up some figures on those different. Yeah, why don't you do that? But I'd, I'd really like to see those done this spring. If we're going to do them, let's do them. If we're not going to do them, then fine. But I don't have any intention of reimbursing the federal government when they change the rules midstream. Another thing they came up with too in this reimbursement <coughs> was. Uh, Frank, you were at that meeting there a few months ago now at the freight house. We we're talking about the right of way, you know, delineation, which is you know part that they've been working on here. There are two or three properties just the other side from here of the library where the sidewalk and the uh, the work zone itself is going to uh, impose upon the, the property line there. And we've talked, if I remember right, we talked about doing easements in there for that, that type of stuff. Well, his last email to me said that you know. You're going to need monies for purchasing a right, a right of way purchase, meaning the state is now saying that we'd have to buy that land off the lot owners in those particular spaces. I think that's going to getting. be a discussion between you and the landowner, not you, but I said right. the landowner. Right. If the landowner insists on selling the necessary space, then that's one issue. Right. If the landowner has no issue of giving an easement without financial compensation, then that's the other issue. Yeah. So it sounded like you know they kind of changed there too a little bit too, and that during this course of these emails coming back and forth, that you know, they went from talking about easements to you know, purchase it right away, which is a whole yeah, different scenario. Do it. So it's something we have to really look into and weigh into the whole thing too here. Okay. I think you get together all your figures and options, and then we need to have a separate discussion on it again because I, I think there's still a lot of questions. So there are. A lot of questions that I'm not comfortable with at this point. I feel like we will one step forward and move too bad right. uh, every time we you know, you feel, talk yeah. about it. So I'll see that. Okay. Um, I have down here to set up a joint meeting with our representatives. I had an email from David Baxter who wants to have the selection of the board. I just explained to him that given the holiday and the Um, I would like us to host, uh, we can do it, we can start off doing it quarterly or otherwise, a meeting where we invite uh, an open town hall for our, our, our state reps, as well as a, either our state senator or one of his representatives to come here. It makes sense for us to do it in conjunction with the Solic Men's meeting, but to have them available to be able to answer uh, questions anybody, any of our citizens might have. I think it's worthwhile to do on a quarterly basis. Any thoughts? No, it's fine. Thoughts? See if you can get them interested in doing it. Well, we don't know that. No, we don't know until we invite them. So I guess in order to give them enough space to be able to do that, we're going to do that. Start in April, first of the month. That's what I was going to suggest, is we give it, you know, give it enough window to, to invite them to say, maybe we'll plug it into this schedule. But if we could start the first Monday of April, 
And then I don't see a reason why we couldn't go ahead and set up to do April, uh, April, April, August, or April, May, June, this, you know, April, August, and uh, and if we just do it the first month, uh, first Monday of each one of those months, and then we could advertise it as well as get the word out through the weird. <laughs> and elsewhere. Right? So why don't you email all them or let of them and then see what we get for response. Oh, I did have a letter in my box also before the two pounds from the um, historical. historical society. Brad, did you get a copy of that? Asking they're asking for is uh, us to the system of cleaning out a large pile of snow in front of their building. No, I'm going we'll to give this to you. Uh, if you have to be, I mean, I don't have any other position to do it, but down there with the loader. I just don't want to send the loader down there on a the special trip. Really hand up. Really hand up. Huh? Really Yes. Does the treasurer from the Osby Historical Society, that person is not on our board. Okay. And we have not asked him to do anything. The church does plow and did knock it down. And at some point, yes, they will repair it. But um, that I don't, as the historical society, we haven't even voted on any of that stuff that hasn't even requested you to do that. So, remove a pile of snow? We, we, no. we did not know about that. Okay. As, the, as the board, we were okay. blindsided. Just we got it. Even well, though it said I was notified. Okay. Well, it was in my box and right. they are from the Historical Society, it's a post. Right. person who's not even on board anymore. Oh, okay. so. That's good to know. Okay. Again, right, just right. regard until we hear something from the, from the actual Historical Society. I just want to add something to this too, if you recall, about probably a month, month and a half ago, we had a request from a church over at Chickville, the same type of thing that we decided not to do. Yep. Because um, that would open up to go to do it for all sorts of other organizations and I think that's a little different. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, new business. Oh, do we have any heat in this building? <laughs> <I'm walking>. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's freezing on back up. Yeah. Come sit over here, people. All right. Public input. Anybody? Okay. Ed. Oh, Hold on. Okay. You don't already know me, I'm your state representative. Or One I of them. Say, uh, you're a representative to the state. Yep. Um, I'm here in Ossipee Selectman meetings. I'm in the Wakefield Selectman's meeting. I'm in Brookfield Selectman's meeting. I don't know, I've not been able to get to exactly yet. I'm available. You can email me, phone me. The website is edcomo.org. Contact me either through Facebook or email. Any questions about bills? I also serve on the uh, Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee down in Concord. That's where all the gun-related uh, public safety uh, bills will go through. That's where you see the bills first uh, before they go to the House to get voted. I have to report, I don't even think the news knows this yet, but on Friday the delegation, including myself, voted to uh, hire, or not to hire, to uh, allow the commissioners to hire at the county, a county administrator. So we, that's going to go forward. Long overdue. Yes, <laughs> I think it'll help. Oh, no question. And it'll help the commissioners too, because it's yeah. a big operation. Sure. Last week, you had mentioned something about franchise fees mm -hmm. that you received from Time Warner. Correct. I didn't know you, you actually have a cable station or a cable system you're attached to. We, well, I don't know that we're attached to it in the sense that I think you may be asking. We, this, and I say we, the town, 20 years ago, uh, when we first got cable, um, entered into a franchise agreement, and I think it was, I don't know if it was Time Warner back then. It may have been a different name. It might have been Adelphia. Adelphia. I think it's been updated as Time Warner. Yeah. But, yeah, and they, they, <laughs> basically set up a franchise agreement where we collect a, a small, small fraction of the fees. We tried back then, I said we the town, I remember tried uh, to get them to extend the cable to everybody and that didn't happen and it should have happened. 
to be honest with you, I think it should have been an all or nothing deal, and if they wanted in, they should have run all the wires, but that's me being okay. So this money is sitting in account all these years? Is no, it just, sitting there it just comes in as a revenue. Um, but I just announced, like like I did tonight with the check that we get from the recovery on, on uh, recycling, it just comes in as a, we get that franchise fees yearly, and they send us an accounting of how much it is. Can I, do you have an idea of how much is in the account? It's not, a, it's not a separate account. It simply comes in as a revenue. So it's not it's not setting in an account someplace under, you know, waiting to be spent on something. It comes in as a revenue. But we can certainly get you the amounts that, that, that are, this year was $13,000 and change. I don't know if that was up or down from last year. Has there anybody in the town been interested in creating a station for Ossipi? Even if you have limited uh, amount of subscribers, you can still reach more people. Yes. I think uh, this is uh, the commissioner's meetings to uh, Wakefield, which also covers Brookfield. Yep. And I also get to more Conway to the system to get that out. Yep. So if anybody in the town, maybe you could advertise it or just offer if anybody wants to start one. Yep. And, you know, I don't think you need that much money. First, yes. if you already have that franchise agreement, that's usually the big hurdle. Yeah. If you have that set up already, you can use that that money yes. to create that. Interesting. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Ski. Okay. Uh, the uh, planning board had a discussion at their last meeting. Uh, th this is for information purposes. Okay. Uh, with an uh, engineer who works for Hannaford. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much the selectmen are aware, but uh, Hannaford is going to expand their store up on 16 and 28. Mm -hmm. They're, as I recall, it's somewhere around 10 or 12,000 square uh, feet. I think it's 16,000. Something like that, what, I don't yep. remember. They didn't have final plans, they had some plans, but uh, it was in a discussion stage only. They're going to uh, present, they believe, the final plans in April. Yep. But uh, I just wanted to uh, let the selectmen know that that's in the works and yep. that's, that's. And I certainly enough. hope that the planning board will do its job, but not, <laughs> you know, not be obstructionist in oh, that. No, we, we didn't, so. Everything went through fine. There was no, no negative insertions but, into their. Uh, Discussion. Good. Uh, it went fine. Now all you got to do is get a market basket, come up here and join them, and then we'll That's all be it. Here. That's it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also understand that the, I don't remember the name of the company, but the company that was going to build magnets back behind mm -hmm. where the movie, uh, where the drive-in was, I understand that still is a, a uh, project that's going forward. We hope. That's, that's what I hear. We certainly hope. So that's a couple of nice projects that are that are coming here into town. Yep. But uh, no, no, the, the, uh, the planning board was very happy with the expansion Good. Of, the, uh, of the thing. And also, too, Irving is uh, going to be coming up probably within, w within the next year for their change of their station down here, mm -hmm. too. So that whole intersection there is going to be going to be brought up uh, to, uh, you know, modern standards. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing, I uh, would like to uh, ask the selectmen if when there's a phone call to the town here of, uh, regarding a complaint of the water sewer department that uh, that phone call be forwarded or ask the person to call the, one of the commissioners, myself, or one of the others, I'm usually available all the time, uh, rather than try to pass it on to the department, because the commissioner should be aware of what's going on. That's, that's true, but I don't, uh, do we have a, do we have a contact number that we give to people? If we normally just refer it right to the water and sewer department. You have somebody who works over there that answers your phone. Yeah, but see, that, sh that shouldn't go. It should come to the commissioner to this complaint, because well, that's up to they your that's up, that's up to your employee to tell their boss. Why? I mean, not for nothing. 
The commissioners are going to come and go and change. If somebody calls here with a question for the water department, we don't try to answer it because it's not our department. Right. We refer them back to the water department. If your employee isn't then notifying you, it seems to me you have a problem over there, not over here. Could, could, could the uh, referral uh, be given my phone number rather than the water sewer department? A complaint. I'm not talking about a breakdown or but, but, a leak or something. To be honest with I'm you, I'm talking about a complaint. I don't know that we really want. I, I, I'm always thinking. I don't really want to get into that. If somebody calls for a water department issue right now, we refer them to the water department. I don't even want our staff determining whether it's a complaint right, or an outage right. or a or a leak or right. or otherwise. Right. And I, I think it's an issue for you with your employee over there if you if you feel like you're being kept out of the loop. Yes. That's where the problem with the loop is, not over here. I just think I think otherwise you're going to be asking our staff to determine what is the nature of what it is that they even want. That's not our job. I mean, yeah, sounds like you need to talk to you your you're, you're an employee over there. Yeah. Because don't they log their calls over there at Ski that come in? They don't maintain a log book where you can get a copy of your log book on they, a weekly they, basis? They do as far as leaks and things. <clears throat> but uh, when, when it's a complaint, they try to deal with it themselves as opposed to uh, referring it to the commissioners. So we and may not know the difference. You we would straighten out that on your end. But but the other the other part of that is I would hope if somebody you know somebody call get, doesn't get the answer that they want over there. Most everybody that's on the water department pretty well aware that we there's a board of commissioners that actually runs it. So it's not like they shouldn't have you know shouldn't be able to access you. But, okay. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Right, is this our tree? It is. Okay. Um, I did research the right of way up there. It's one of those old state roads where we have a, a 66 foot wide right of way. Okay. And that tree is within the right of way. Okay. Um, you know, I did go up. Um, Timmy and I have looked at it over you know, the years and stuff, get his opinion on it. Then last fall, I had Dan Libby come in and I went up with him. We looked at the tree. And I apologize, it is my fault. I didn't get back to you after Dan Libby came and looked at it last fall. Um, but his, his take on the tree was that it's actually a fairly healthy tree and Jimmy felt the same thing but I wanted to get an outside opinion on it too to have it looked at. Um, the leaders that are in it, there are, you know, the few that did, there was probably a couple, the few dead ones that had come down over the years, but everything that's up in the tree right now, you see the thing look very healthy and, and you know, the 
the tree itself looked very good there. So um, I was of the impression from his comments that we probably wouldn't do anything with the tree right now. And again, he said, I apologize. It is my fault for not responding back to Gwen about that. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now with this. When this well, you say the man looked at it, is there any better way to tell if there's rock in there? Well, you're looking at it pretty good. There's all the, all the notches in the tree. There's no, you usually you can tell if they start to rot and stuff because the bark can cut it off and you can see the, you know, the stuff laying in there and stuff. And they all look good and clean in there. It's, it's, you know. And why are they coming down? A white pine will shed. I, I've, got, <laughs> I've got one that's about twice this size on the edge of my, on the edge of my driveway. The white pines will shed, will shed some pretty good sized limbs and that's what these ones that you're circling. Those are the ones that used to scare the bejesus out of me when I had kids because I was afraid of them coming down and hitting somebody. Well, you know, I'm back at my house in my car and I don't have yep. any room really. Yep. You know, it's just not a big piece of property. And I'm not a tree yep. monger. I like to say trees, but this one has uh, some trees that are really kind of stressed out. That's right. No, we usually don't remove trees unless there's this damage to them or, or there are a chance of them going down. And this, this one, I don't know. Is there, is there maybe uh, a chance, Brad, you can uh, see if there are any dead limbs on it, maybe we can take down and make it? They didn't seem to think there were really any dead limbs nope. to speak of in there. Um, you said you could do a prune to thin it a little bit just to get some of the weight off those leaders that come up there, but. At the same time, he didn't think that there was anything that was dangerous to the tree at all there when we looked at it in the fall. Those they do, they do shed though some pretty good sized limbs sometimes. I know that one of mine, you know, three or four inch ones come out of it on a regular basis. Boy, Unfortunately, that one I own the tree, it's not theirs. So I gotta pay to have to take it down when it comes time. Well, it gives us a long time to wait to find out if it's any good or not. But there's a lot of dead weight in there, that's for sure, because it's coming. All right, can we, um, can we have that looked at again just as soon as the snow is gone? Yes. Um, and then we, somebody will get back to you, whether it's us or Brad, so somebody will get back to you. As soon as the snow is gone, we'll have it take a look, take a look at it again and see what the status is. Okay? Thank you. All right. Uh, Kelly, do you have a need for a public, uh, non-public comment on tax? Okay. Uh, anything else on the public input, anybody? Ed? Just a quick report on virtual town hall. I believe you voted a few weeks ago or a few months ago to uh, start that process. Yep. Virtual town hall. The website, virtual town hall. Yes. A report on. Oh, how it's uh, it. it's in process. It's it's actually up and running now, or no. is it? No, we're still designing it. Okay. It'll probably be a few more weeks. But it's it's in process. Looking forward to it. Good. Yes. I, I'd like to uh, add to what you had said earlier about. Uh, Brad and his crew doing a great job on the roads. I mean, uh, after these storms, the next day, our roads were clear. You yep. go up to, towards Tufton Borough, or even in the Wolf Borough, and there was snow on the roads, and it showed idle. Yep. Brad's roads, our roads, were clear. Guys so doing, doing awesome a great job. job. Yep. Really, it is. Guys doing uh, great job. I've, I've said for years, we, we could get a storm, we could get, you know, like, <laughs> I love the dramatic music and all of the storm alerts and everything else, yeah. and then we get 12 inches of snow. Well, that's one that's not anything to be too excited about around here, but I've said for years that you could get three feet of snow if you would just get out of their way, give them a few hours, you'll be able to drive anywhere you want to drive. Yeah, just get out of their way and let them do the job. They do a great but they job. do do a good job, and, and this has been... Great, you know, not good. Great job. Lately, it's been, uh, you know, certainly time for someone on their part. Yeah. I also want to add that uh, when, when Brad was discussing uh, uh, paving... Uh, our road up there, I was kind of against it, and so were a couple other people, because uh, saying that leave it at the gravel, it would be easier to travel on and easier to maintain. But Brad said no, and I didn't believe him. I believe him now, yeah. because it's, it worked out great. I mean, uh, you know, the, uh, the the paving of it is it's, it's worked out beautiful. It's a beautiful road, except for that little section of Tuftonboro right in the middle. Yeah, right in there. Yeah. He hasn't been all that way here for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he, he deserves that boys right along. Yep. 
and there's a beautiful road up to that now. Yep. Anything else? All right, we do have a need to go into non-public. Um, this is under 91A32A and C. Just to see? Just to see. Okay. Last week, I'm sorry. All right. Um, and that is to discuss uh, taxpayer issues with our tax collector. I'll poll the board. Roll call. Mr. Freeman. Yes. Mr. Riley. Yes. And Rick Morgan. Yes. We will be back shortly. Session. Yep. Uh, anything else to come before the meeting? No, Frank. No. I don't. I don't think I have anything either. Uh, other than we will be um, Friday, we'll be having the town reports out to be distributed Friday afternoon. After we do the dedication. We're going to do the dedication uh, here at around noon on Friday. And then they'll be available and out. Uh, candidate signed again is March 2nd. Last set. I don't think I have anything else. So with that, I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>